in chapter four of Food Over Medicine, what did you mean by success stories? Well, success stories are people who were in terrible shape or sick and not being told the truth about the cause of their conditions or the uselessness of their treatment and found us somehow and learned how to look at evidence, look at risks and benefits and make different choices and actually were able to regain their health that way. And it was them that did it, you know? That's the thing that's so exciting about this is that the way that medicine is set up right now, it's all about finding a great doctor who has all the answers so I can just do what he says and it's gonna end up great. Well, it doesn't end up great. It's about finding out the things that you need to do to improve your health. So that's why we really position ourselves as content creators in an education company because the people who, that you have to use this information, go home and fix yourself, right? And that's what these stories are all about. And some of them are just amazing. I mean, some of them I still cry when I think about them. You know, this one woman, um, amazing story, had leukemia. She wasn't getting better. And she was pretty sure she was going to die. And she just went home and dropped her knees on the hall floor and said, God, you know, I don't think I want to die. And if there's a way to get through this and save myself, let me know what it is. And she ran into an associate of mine the next day. And you can say whatever, if different people think different things. I kind of think some of this is a God thing. Unfashionable to say these days, but I don't really care about that anymore. So anyway, she found her way to us. And um, uh, her husband was apoplectic about her not continuing the chemotherapy, but it clearly wasn't working. And she said, I'll tell you what, just give me an opportunity to take care of myself right, the way that these people are showing me. And if it doesn't work, I'll go back to the chemo. Well, it did. And um, she ended up, uh, and there's a, the part that always makes me cry, is that um, the chemotherapy that she had 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 put her in menopause. And after the whole thing was over, she always wanted to have a baby, but that wasn't going to happen. And one day she just, she got pregnant. And um, her menstrual period started again. And she called us, yeah, I'm going to tear up. But, um, but she ended up having a, a baby, and he's graduating from high school this year, I think. So, yeah. That's a success story on so many levels, right? And that happens all the time in our office, stuff like that, where um, you know, little children get are sick, parents terrified. You know, One woman found out about us on a park bench. She had a kid with Crohn's disease and not doing well. And she said, I don't even know why I said something. You, know, you don't usually talk to strangers about your kid's health condition. And this woman said, um, you ought to call these people in Columbus. And she said, okay. So she went home and told her husband. They got online and they looked me up. And he goes, yeah, like she's going to talk to you, right? And uh, so anyway, she called. And yeah, we do talk to people. <laughs> and uh, the little girl's fine. And so you think about this. This is an interesting thing. People in the healthcare field hate it. They're so unhappy. You know, most, it's unfortunate that most doctors have ended up in a situation where I think they went into medicine for the right reason, but they're certainly not enjoying their careers right now. And I've had colleagues joke to me that, yeah, I wish I'd become an architect, or I think being a plumber would be more fun than this. And, and so, but the, but the reason is they're missing out on the part of all of this that's so much fun, which is empowering people to take care of themselves because you get happy endings when people are involved actively in their health status. That's where the happy endings come from. It's not us doing it. It's them doing it. We're just providing you know, the tools and the information. And, and that's what's lacking. The information is what's lacking. Do you have any opinion on sunscreen? I have an opinion on everything. Yeah, so the problem with sunscreen is several fold. First of all, it contains chemicals that are only now being tested. Again, our government lets a product be on the market for a long time. And after a few decades, they say, maybe we should see if this is safe, right? It's, I mean, it's such a backwards, ridiculous thing. And so some new research has shown that, that uh, there are disturbing levels of carcinogens that result from using sunscreen. A bigger issue is if you use sunscreen, you can't produce vitamin D, okay? And vitamin D is needed for function. It's not a vitamin, just so you know. It's a hormone. And so that's why it's not in food. I mean, who goes into the grocery store and says, I'm looking for some foods that contain insulin? Nobody, right? Because it's a hormone that's produced by the body. 
Same thing with vitamin D. And the natural way to achieve vitamin D is to get out in the sun. So we're teaching people, the sunscreen industry, along with you know the sheep of the medical profession who bought into this idea, people should stay out of the sun. It's dangerous. Now, humans have lived in the sun since the beginning of time, so that's kind of ridiculous. And if we were supposed to get vitamin D from pills, there weren't any back in the day. So it kind of makes you wonder sometimes how we survived as a species without all this intervention. All right, so back to the sunscreen. You, you wear the sunscreen, you, you don't get any vitamin D production. But another problem is, and we're just starting to find this out, is that um, when you avoid the sun, first of all, the, there, there are 10,000 other photo products that are produced, like nitric oxide that keeps your blood vessels open. So it's the equivalent of, um, of uh, smoking in terms of early mortality. Um, and also, you're only blocking out some of the rays, which means that the skin cancer rate is actually going up as a result of people spending too long in the sun. See, I don't ever wear the stuff. So I'm really conscious about how much time I can spend in the sun in April when I start spending time outside and then throughout the summer. And when I reach my limit, which is obviously more in August than it would be in May, I either sit in the shade, put on something over, wear a hat, something, but I don't let myself have too much sun exposure. But if I'm slathering myself with sunscreen, I walk down to the beach from my summer place and sit out there for six hours, my skin doesn't turn color, but six hours of sun exposure, even at the end of the summer when I'm already tan, is really deadly, right? So the skin cancer rate is actually going up as a result of uh, the use of sunscreen.